It was the eve of the second, or was it the third, of all the Christmases, when three little, rather self-esteemed girl seraphs slipped out of the pearly gates of one of the heavenly spheres and ran merrily down the star-powdered stairways of the sky to sing carols to the little child. They were, in fact, the first of the waits, but they did not know that they were there. When they got to the earth, they found that they had made a slight miscalculation, and that they had still to go through a fir wood before they came to the babe's abode. Very beautiful the fir wood looked in the frosty moonlight, and very beautiful the three little seraphs looked too as they hastened through it, while the faint and tender effulgence of their preparatory paradise, which was still about them, made the pine shadows deeper and more velvety, and the three little seraphs themselves to look like three little glorified glowworms. Very lovely were their flower faces, you may be, for sure, and their best clothes, new on for the occasion, were all the scarlets, blues, and golds that you can imagine. Their holocon wings, too, were folded closely about them and over their chests, for it was cold, and the snow and the moonlight were, of course, strange to them, and a little frightening besides. And so they ran tippity-toe, each carrying her harp. Now there sat in the wood on the stump of a tree a freckled little pagan fawn, he was a very little one, and he was feeling uncommonly lonesome, for his family had been fed out of it for the last year or more, and so there he sat alone, and occasionally he blew himself a few notes on his whistle for company, and between whiles he blew on his fingers to keep them warm. Presently he saw the three little seraphs running tippity-toe, and he thought that he'd never seen anything so lovely before, and he longed to be their playmate. "'Oh, you lovely little girl nymphs!' said he, for he knew no better. "'Where are you going to?' "'Oh, you little pagan fawn!' said the big seraph. "'We're going to sing carols to the babe.' "'May I not come with you?' asked the little pagan fawn, ever so humbly. "'I cannot sing carols, but I can play tunes on my whistle.' "'No, indeed, you little pagan fawn,' replied the biggest one again. "'Certainly not!' And her two sparkly sisters said, "'What an idea!' And then they all ran on, more tippity-toe than ever, and came to the babe's abode. And then there they stood up, outside in the snow, and sang their carols more clearly and sweetly than the thrushes. And this is what they thought as they were singing. The first one thought, how beautifully I'm singing tonight, and how pleased the babe will be to hear me. The second one thought, How sweetly I make my harp to ring, and how happy the babe must be listening to it. The third one thought, How becoming to me are these beautiful clothes I have put on in the babe's honor, and how he clap his hands to see me. Thus they thought as they sang together more clearly and sweetly than the rushes. And in the sharp blue shadow of a pine tree sat the little pagan fawn, who had followed them there, far off and unbeknownst, and his heart was in his little pagan throat, for never had he heard such tunes or seen such flower faces in all the forest. And when the carols were sung, the biggest little seraph went to the door and knocked, and the lady of the house, who was the babe's mother, opened it and stood there holding the babe to her heart, and very sweet and kindly she looked with the firelight about her, and her little son sitting grave and sleepy-eyed in her arms. And the three little seraphim all curtsied down to the snow, very low indeed, and then they all say together, We wish you a Merry Christmas, and we hope you liked our carols. Now, as a matter of fact, the lady and the babe had not heard the carols at all, not a note of them, though the singers had sung them more clearly and sweetly than the thrushes, and this was, as the lady knew at once, you probably guess, because the three little self-esteeming seraphs had thought all the time only of their own sweet singing, their own sweet harping, and their own lovely new clothes, and thus had rendered their music mute to those whose honor it was intended. But the lady of the house was too kind and gentle to say this, for she hated to hurt anyone, and the seraphim were rather really little darlings after all, and meant very well. So she said, Thank you kindly, my dears. And to her little son she said, Say thank you. And the babe said thank you, 
where he could just talk a little, and speaking very clearly, gravely, and politely. And then she gave each of the three a bit of the babe's birthday cake, although it was a day too soon to cut it, and wished them a Merry Christmas, and they ran off tippity-toe again through the cold and moonlit world. Their holocon wings folded over the chests until they came to the purple stairway, up which they ran, twinkling like stars, as fast as they ran down it. And when they gone, and the house door was shut again, little Fawn trotted timidly out of the shadows and began to blow a little tune on his whistle, all about the summer, and the hills of the sheep and the little woolly lambs. And as he played, he thought to himself thus, that was the most beautiful little boy shepherd I have ever seen, but he looks grave, and I should love to make him laugh. So I'll try very hard indeed to play my best for him, and though he will think very poor stuff after the carols. Now he had not played more than half of his tune before the lady came out to the door of her own accord and said, Oh, you funny little Vaughn, please do come in now with the cold, and finish the pretty tune that you are so kindly playing to us in the kitchen where we can hear it even better. So the fawn stamped the snow out of his hoofs and came in and put his whistle to his lips and played his tune so merrily that the babe laughed with delight, like Robin singing. The lady laughed too, as gaily as a girl, tapping her foot the while in time with the music. And when he had done, she gave the little fawn an extra bit of birthday cake, and he asked, Please, my lady, may I not stay here for always and make tunes for the babe to laugh at? And the lady said very gently, No, my dear, that cannot be. You must go back to the wood and play your tunes to the rabbits and the shepherds and the shadows of the trees, and so help to make the world laugh and go round. But, she added, You shall come and stay with the babe and me when the world's gone round enough. And a Merry Christmas to you, my dear, and thank you. Now, you may not be able to believe that the lady promised the little pagan fawn anything of the sort, but I can assure you that she did, and that he trotted off into the woods again, munching his cake and feeling much comforted about things, just as the clocks were striking twelve, and it was Christmas Day.